Oh, hi dudes, how's it going? I'm glad you're there. Look what I've borrowed. Yeah, we've just done a little video considering how much it costs. So here we are. I've borrowed it, had a little play, like you do. <laughs> yeah, well, so we we sat in an old uh, Land Rover and we're thinking there's not going to be any faults, is there? I mean, nothing goes wrong with old Land Rovers. Anyway, we had a look. So this is what happens. Right, so we've covered what they cost and what they can do. He's got this one. It's for Discovery 2. It also covers the Defender. Rover P38, if you press that little button there, um, it says Navicom. Okay, so this particular one is a CAN bus vehicle, uh, Rover P38, Discovery 2, Defender. But he's only got the codes for the Disco 2. So, you go like that, and he goes dinky dinky dinky, and you've got TD5, obviously, dink. Right, TD5 engine, map, slabs, Valio, BCU. Yes, there's all sorts of stuff there. But we're going to play with the TD5 engine. Now, I'm just going to pop the ignition on first. Otherwise, it won't talk to it. It gets very shy if it's not uh, powered up. Right, TD5 engine. And you've got false settings, inputs, which inputs fueling. Right, so false. So it did that. No fault code stored in the ECU. Excellent. Except, of course, it didn't say that last time. It said 2,8 ambient air pressure sensor logged low. Okay. So I uh, I googled it. Flipping egg, what a bloody rabbit hole that was. Right, so this is my take on the ambient air pressure sensor logged low. Ambient air pressure sensor is this one. Alright, that's in the top of the air box. It's wired into the little loom that also does the math and all the other gubbins which toddles away its way around to the front of the box. Right, this is not to be confused with the MAP and sensor, the MAP, which is under here. Okay, that's manifold absolute pressure, and that tells the computer how much the boost is being chucked in by the turbo. But back to the um, ambient air pressure sensor. As you can tell by the writing, I got a second hand one because mine was faulty. This one is mine. Now by all accounts, although I'm not I can't guarantee it whatsoever, but these things are fitted to minis. The the new mini, the BMW mini, the older ones. Whether they're still fitted to new ones, I do not know. But that's what that's what I'm led to understand. It's a MHK 100-600 right, and it's, it's basically a barometer it fuels the engine depending on how high the vehicle is in the general nature of things i.e. top of Penny Ghent perhaps or, or Snowden or down in the Mariana Trench and then it fuels the engine in proportion to what the, the ambient pressure sensor is um, I wouldn't recommend doing the Mariana Trench um, you need a really, really, really long snorkel. Anyway, never mind that. That's not why we're here. So, ambient air pressure sensor. Now, on the Tempe engines, yes, I know that's all they're worth. We know it's a Tempe engine because they say, well, it's a 1999 Discovery and 10, 16p engines didn't come in until, sorry, 15p engines didn't come in until 2002. Now, 15p engines have an EGI cooler on the front. That's how you get, that's basically how I can tell the difference. There's lots of other stuff. You get your facelifted headlights and all that. But the main difference is the EGI cooler is on the front. 
Okay, if you don't go along the front, it's probably a temporary engine, which is this one. The reason I mention it is the temporary engines, these sensors only have three wires. The 15p engine has four wires because it's, all, it's not only is it an ambient air pressure sensor, it's also a temperature sensor. Now, on the temporary engine, I didn't take the cover off, but the map sensor under here is also an inlet temperature sensor. Alright, that's the basic difference. So a 15p engine, that's the map sensor, and it just does mapping. And the ambient air pressure sensor um, does the um, temperature in as well. Which is why you can't use a 15p sensor on a 10p engine because you've got four wires. Unless, to my mind, you should be able to get the plug as well and then just rewire it with the three wires that you do need. And you don't need the fourth wire which is the temperature because it's being dealt with by the map sensor. But if that's too simple, then let me know. But that's what I would do. Well, so that would have been what I was going to do if this one hadn't worked. Um, scrapyard, obviously, and it it goes straight on because it's the three wire. So that's the basic difference. Ten p engines, three wires to your ambient pressure sensor. Fifteen p engines, face left onwards, four wires. Right. So that was that. That was that was quite fun. So we've changed it. Hands up if you knew that the air box looks like that underneath. That bit down there. I didn't know that. It's the first time I've seen it without the, uh, the diddly bit on, the, on the, f the feed from the wing. So it doesn't go around, it's just a, it's just a stator. Um, I can only imagine that it wants to swirl the air as it comes in, so perhaps throwing away detritus. Don't know. If anybody can be like me, I'd be really tickled for, to find out. Right, so this sensor has now been changed. That was the old one. That's the other old one, but in better condition than the one I've got. Right, oh, so that's fun. I'm glad I cleared that up. <laughs> Right, 10p engines, 3 wire, 15p engines, 4 wire. Okay. Right, okay then. So, put the ignition back on. Inputs fueling. And it's working. And you get engine speed, idle speed error, no idea. Uh, road speed, none because we're not moving. And battery, 172. That's not it's not very good. However, it'll do for now. Accelerator wave one, two. I don't think I don't think we have a three on this one. We've only got one and two. You've got a low one and a high one. What you have to do when you press the accelerator, they change. Because the two values go up and one goes down and they collide in the middle. And should match like so more or less then both of them should add up to the accelerator supply so that's accelerator off accelerator to the floor okay that was fun wasn't it right next coolant temperature obviously it's not it's cold because I've not uh, run it yet. So fuel temperature ditto. That's taken from the fuel pressure gauge. Uh, fuel pressure unit on the side of the head. Right, inlet temp. This is the map sensor from the inlet manifold. That's where that's coming from. And your airflow. Well, it shouldn't be any because we're not running them. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Right, ambient pressure, this is what we're here for. 98.45. Manifold turbo pressure in 98.18. So it should, obviously it should be this more or less the same because there's no boost yet. And there's no EGR business because there's no EGR. Right, now with my with the old um, sensor, 
that used to say 96 regardless of what the whatever the pressure was at the time um, I forgot to look at the barometer to, to be honest but anyway at the moment this is what it, this is what it is uh, 98.45 and then you got ah cylinder balances that's fun we'll come back to that right so what we'll do now is we'll uh, fire up the Ratley TD5 and there we go right Okay. Coolant temp still turn, fuel temp, that's not going to change yet. Uh, right, airflow is now going up to 58. That's a reading from the uh, MAF, Mass Airflow Sensor. I'm glad it's gone up. And clearly it'll go up more, won't you? Accelerate. Okay, so that's fun, isn't it? Uh, accelerator wave again. That's all right. All right back down here. Coolant temp warm up a bit. And the air pressure that shouldn't change. You're right. Now this is fun. This is cylinder balances. Is that? Apparently. From what I've read, after consuming copious amounts of tea and watching far too much YouTube, anything below my plus or minus 15 is good. So, well, if we press that, it freezes the readings, you get an average. And we've got an 11. So that's not good. However, it's still, it's still cold, so let's not uh, worry about it so far. Well, that's your cylinder balances. If you have a, if you've borrowed an Anacom as well, and you've got one, and you're looking at your cylinder balances. Um, yes, that's what it is. It shouldn't be any more than plus or minus 15. If it is, you'll probably log a fault, and then you've got a problem. It could be an injector, valve, cracked head, um, yeah, piles, bunions, everything. You know what it's like, right? So that's, yeah, that's quite fun. We'll come back to that when it's warm. Yeah, manifold turbo pressure. That's not going to change much until I boot it. I'm not going to do that until it warms up. Well, let's try a bit now. Oh, there we go. We had a little bit of pressure there. So that must be working. Well, actually, we've, we've just already checked the faults. We know nothing's working, so... So we know everything's working. So we're okay with that. Coolant's going to be 21. Fuel temp's warmed up a bit. Air inlets, that's also warmed up because it's coming through the warm engine. That's the map sensor. Unless it's a 15p engine, in which case it's just um, be different because you're reading from the front of the air box, not the manifold, the inlet manifold. Right, accelerator wave, yes, that's all for me. Engine speed 764, idle speed error. I suppose there's a log in the ECU that says this, you need to be this. And it just wanders wand about a bit. Road speed none, batteries now 1564, so, sorry, 1464. So clearly the alternator's working. This is great, isn't it? Come out of that. Now input switch. Now input switch. This is this is all the technical stuff. Brake switch one, brake switch two, clutch switch, which is on, oddly enough. I haven't even got one, and it's on. Transfer ratio, gearbox, P and N, cruise control, off. So if you press the brake. There must be two switches to check each other. Clutch switch. <laughs> I guess it'll be on somewhere, but not in my car. No. That's that. Cruise resume. Off. Set accelerate off. 
Um, yes, it's all off. Marvellous. So oh, come on that. Um, go back to faults. No fault story. Yes, it's bloody marvellous. So, my ambient air pressure sensor log glow is now OK. Now, the only, it took an awful lot of driving about to find this out. Because it's not something that comes up immediately. You need to drive about a bit. Um, settings... No, no, don't want to touch that just yet. Now you've got outputs and you've got utility. What's outputs? Oh, ah, I see. Test clutch, test fan, test milliamps. Right. Test glow plugs. Pulse rev counter, turbo, wastegate mode, temperature gauge, EGR modulator. Ooh. That was cool. I was not going to touch that. And utility uh -huh, is that. Okay. This is all good stuff. Um, yeah, well, there's loads of stuff, but the point is that I was here because of the ambient air pressure sensor. Um, which I had no idea was even faulty. P5 map slabs. Uh, any faults? Let's have a look. Working. Oh, no fault sounds. Thank goodness. Right. Clear them if there was. Settings. Uh, oh, crikey. Test status enabled, PCU calibrate. Oh, flipping heck! Hey, <laughs> we're not worried about that, are we, at all? No, no, of course not. No, it's just me going like that. Yeah, okay, so I press that. Nothing happens, it's all still there. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to press it again. It's all still there. Right. Oh, it's all gone off now. Oh, thank goodness. I think you're supposed to do <laughs> is check stuff. I'll come back to that at a later stage. I'm just, this is somebody else's tackle I'm playing with. You've got to be careful, haven't you? There has been the odd occasion when the, uh, the, the plug's underneath here. And mine's broken. Well, it's not broken, but it doesn't attach like it should. I'd be halfway through doing some messing about, and it would just stop, freeze up and stop. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I've broken it. Um, that's to unplug it, re-plug it in again. And then it fired up, so a bit of, bit of WD-30 in the pin, WD-30. OK, I might use some WD-40 as well. Pop that in the pins and it's been fine ever since, so I think that's just a well-entered um, ECU plug. Anyway. Yeah, so inputs fuel, let's have a look. How are we doing now? Engine speed, still working. Same for the AI, idle speed, road speed, battery. Accelerator wave, yeah. Just some of that. Cooling temps up to 37 now. Fuel temps 21, and it's 13. Air yeah, flow. Some point in the future, I'll uh, put the old math back on and see if there's any difference in the readings. Just out of maudlin curiosity. Right, ambient air pressure obviously should be still the same. Table pressure. Just a little bit of boost there. 
Yeah, I was assuming the bounce was coming on, now we're a bit warmer. We'll let it have a think for a minute. And we'll press one of them. Flipping out, we've got a 14 on cylinder 3, that's not good. Well, I should move from cylinder 1. <laughs> Are we worried? Just ask yourself, are we worried? No. You always do the cylinder bounces at idle, you don't rev it, it's not going to mean anything. They're only done at idle. So we'll have another freeze. We still got 14 and we're still in the 3. Hmm, that's not good. It's just one below what it'll log, at, log a fault at. Now that could be anything, it could be oil in the loom, uh, mucky fuel, I don't know, to be quite fair, I don't know. We've <laughs> got <laughs> 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 12 on cylinder 5 as well. Right. Perhaps some cleaner through the diesel system might help. It's the only place to start, isn't it? Get something to lob through. Yeah, it's quite consistent. Hmm. Okay. Let's not worry about it yet. I was here because of the ambient pressure sensor, which is which have changed and is now happy. It's not recording any faults now. Then it waves. Then you press there. And there. Those instruments. Oh, right. That's how you get that up. There you go, look. Right, so the air inlet temp, that's on the uh, inlet manifold on the map sensor on the Tempe engine. Fuel temp, that's well, fuel temp. Pressure sensor, that should be the same. And airflow, which is probably, re it's probably reasonable. I think, it's, in fact, uh, it's just about normal as that. Uh huh. Was that my balances again? Oh great, what do you see? <laughs> yeah, the longer, we'll, the longer we'll look, the worse it gets. Right, accelerator, this is the accelerator pedal. EJ, EJ, that's not going to work, is it? Right, okay. That's cool. Right, and that's that. Systems switched off. Bloody marvellous. Right, handle with extreme caution because it's not mine. Uh, peace and quiet at last. Right, okay, then. Uh, that's the ambient air pressure sensor. I hope I've cleared that, that up. Um, I'll fix mine, I've got a second handle. Uh, Still not sure if you could get a 15p one then just alter the wiring a little bit, just get the plug to go with it. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, so that, that's my my fun time with a borrowed Nelnico. Um it's, it's a hoot, isn't it? I have to have to have, to have another play. But at the moment, I think it's good. Uh, apart from my cylinder balances, which are hanging by a thread. That's all right. Well, it's a little, 
typical uh, maintenance fashion always uh, leave it worse than you find it done it right um, yeah I can't think of anything else there was something else I was going to say I can't remember what it was can't be any important right I'm going to crack on because uh, my tea's going cold right people it's been nice to see you hope you're all well don't get lost or squashed thanks for watching thanks for commenting and I shall see you in a bit